chatting about um, how to approach your third year. And the reason why we did this is in the last couple of years, we've seen a big change happen to third year. Now, most of our students are from UNISA, but we also have students from other universities that we support. Um, but mostly UNISA students, because it's a distance learning course, they don't have a lot of support and you are basically on your own. A lot of students work full time as well. So our courses are there to assist you. But tonight is more advice than marketing. But I will tell you a little bit about the course at the end. Uh, so the change happened a couple of years ago where uh, the gap between second year and third year really widened. And a lot of students started failing their third year because they got caught out or they were surprised when they go into the final exam and then saw it was so different from second year. So the the biggest changes were to this, the way that the questions are asked. The theory is the same. A lot of the um, study guides or the tight letters stay the same. We will chat about some of the changes tonight and Claudia will chat about FINAC uh, 3 seven six four specifically and the new courses that we introduced this year to your your final year um but the change so so for management accounting for instance we are waiting for the title for 2023 but for 2022 for instance it was still the same as 2017 nothing really changed they just threw the two semester modules together to form the year module so the biggest change was the way that the exams were asked, the, the style of questions. There were a lot more discussion questions. Um, Claudia, I, I mean, what have, what have you seen for the financial accounting? So firstly, uh, welcome everyone. Lovely to have you joining us. Um, I think on the, the second year, um, just the way that the information is presented and specifically how the questions are asked in comparison to third year. So Francois, you alluded to the nature of the content be the same, but the way that it is asked is different. And um, really it's it's the integration. So if I put it under the, the heading, integration of questions um, is a lot more evidence on third year. So let me give you an example so it makes a bit more sense. On second year, usually what we see in group accounting is like pod A, provide the journal entries for the intercompany sale of inventory. Part B, prepare the journal entries for the preference dividend. Part C, um, provide for the journal entries for um, the ad acquisition of the subsidiary. Whereas you're not going to have that step-by-step -step process in second year. On third year, I mean, if I just looked at, for example, the previous group accounting um, paper, part A straight away is prepare the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. And the scenario had leases, it had financial instruments, it had employee benefits, it had um, a consolidation, it had an associate. So there's so many things happening in the scenario and you can't just read this section and then there's a required that deals with this section. And then there's another section and a required that very cleanly deals with that second part. So now the information is still presented in the same way. It's very much, you know, section per section. It's not all the information kind of scrambled into one scenario. It's still very clean. But the way that it's asked is not first deal with this and then this and then this. The required is prepare the statement of profit or loss or the statement of financial position for everything, right? And I think that becomes very, very overwhelming for students because they don't know where to start. There's so much that needs to be done. And you, you do need a bit of a structured approach and being able to deal with each of them. Um, so there's no more this very easy or clean cut um, required that is presented to you. Every, the, the required as such, what's going to be asked for you, asked from you, is in a very integrated format. It's dealing with everything at once. So I think that's one of the biggest things other than discussion. How many case studies are there in the final exam or were there in the final exam or the tests? How many different case studies was just being one, one big one? So what we saw last year on um, 3762, which was the groups one, there was um, a huge one. Uh, so there were two. The first one made up, I would say, three quarters or four fifths of the whole paper uh, mm -hmm. in terms of volume. Uh, with everything just in one big case study. And also part of it was prepare it from um, the separate view of the entity. And then part B was in the consolidated view. So you can present the same thing, 
uh, the same information, but ask it from different ways. And then there was just an, a very small second case study. So generally, I mean, I think on second year, we sometimes see three or four questions, one of them possibly being MCQ. Right here, it's just um, usually two, of which one is quite big. That's the same for management accounting. I've seen the last couple of years, and that applies to the semester modules, but as uh, specifically the year module as well is that there's either just one case study for 100 marks you have to read this one case study five or six pages and then there's say from a to g or a to i different questions on that big case study like Claudia said it's still section by section so if you look carefully you'll see there are headings and then this you can see is the activity-based costing information and this is maybe the the weighted average cost of capital information sometimes they split it into two so you've got your financial management and costing or they mix the two but there's two scenarios but certainly very different from second year where you knew ah oh, this is the calculate net present value or calculate the weighted average, average cost of capital or calculate these ratios for the financial statements and comment on each one for certain marks and they give you the the breakdown now in in third year they'll stay um they'll give you a problem and you have to answer this problem by calculating the net present value and then discussing other factors etc so it's it's the way they ask it is so different and that is why we you you probably heard this before from from your lecturers uh that you have to do questions and and we all know we have to do questions at some point that's why they give us the, the big question bank